What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning into the Queen's Launch Podcast. I am your homegirl, Shay. And of course, I got a dope, dope, dope podcast episode for you today. I have three lovely ladies that are going to be joining me in today's special topic. I'm going to have the ladies come in, introduce themselves, and let you know who they are. Ladies, who wants to go first? We'll start at the corner. Shalante, let the people know who you are, ma'am. All right. So my name is Shalante. I am a wife and a mother of four. I have a 13-year-old daughter, a four-year-old daughter, a three-year-old son, and a seven-month-old son. And my village is complete. That's it. We got the four and we done. <laughs> I'm excited to be here and share a conversation with these wonderful ladies on today. Thank you so much for joining us. Sis, Tam, let the people know who you are. Okay, I got it off the mute. I was like, I'm trying to take it off. I am Tam James, mother of three. Um, the oldest is 22. Kiana is 18, turning 19. And Zaria is four. So today's topic will be very, very interesting. <laughs> Absolutely, since you have kids that are in multiple age groups. And last but not least, A.T., let the people know who you are. Hey, everybody. I am Shonda, a.k.a. Inspiration. Um, I am a single mom, divorced um, have two kids. My son is 23. My daughter is 17. Um, so yeah, that's my stats. And I'm good. I was good, like Shalate said, with the with the two. The guy didn't make no more genders. So I was fine. That's funny. That sounds like my mom, because my mom was like, I mean, what do you need more than just two? If you got one of each sex, I mean, you good. So I guess we're gonna go with that then. Okay, so ladies, the first thing that we're going to discuss is the reason why I chose this topic. And the reason why I chose this topic is being a first-time mom, there are um, a lot of questions and concerns when it comes to having a child. Um, I am a mother who wants multiple children. I don't know how many multiples that is. Got to consult with the husband on that. But with that being said, um, although there are a lot of women in my family who have had children whose advice I take dear to heart and I trust what they say, I value their opinions, there are still some things personally that me as a mom battle with. Um, having a child at the age that I had a child, I didn't plan on that. That's number one, but that was God's timing. And then number two is having a child who had multiple challenges. I'll put it that way because God is still working. Having a child that has multiple challenges, I often worry about what his progress is going to look like the older he gets. Um, and so having these ladies on the episode with me today and talking about this specific topic I want it because they all are women with children. They are women who I um, take advice and love dearly. Not only that, but they have children who are in different stages of their lives. And with that being said, we're going to dive into the childhood of our children. Okay. Uh, sis has the youngest one. Shalante has the youngest one. Her youngest baby is seven months. Then it'll be me. Then it'll be sis at the bottom. She has a four-year-old. And then Auntie Shonda is the one. Her nest is clear, honey. Okay. She has a uh, young adult or a young teenager. So we'll get into that as well. So with Khalil, um, everybody's familiar with his story. Everybody's familiar with how he got here and things like that. Um, I struggled with infertility. And with that being said, my husband and I had to do um, infertility, you know, shots and all that good stuff. And then we produced our son. Um, I had to have an emergency C-section because he was stuck in the birth canal. So I had to have an uh, emergency C-section. When he was born, he wasn't breathing. His breathing level was very, very low. And it was around 20, 25% of breathing. So we had to be rushed to another hospital. Um, they had to do cooling. And once they did the cooling, they noticed he was having a lot of seizures. Didn't know why he was having a lot of seizures. They had to do an MRI. They did an MRI to find out there had been a significant loss of oxygen in the brain, specifically one whole side of his brain. And because of that was the reason for the seizure. So they did what's called a cooling process, which um, further stops any more damage to the brain. So we had to do that for three days. Once they did that, they transfer transferred him to another room where we were in NICU for about 
a month and a half. Um, once they did that, they wanted to make sure he was breathing on his own. They wanted to make sure they did another MRI to make sure that nothing else in the brain was damaged or nothing was spreading. Um, he was hooked up to so many different things. Uh, people have seen the pictures if they are uh, friends of mine on Facebook, but look at him now. He's 14 months, breathing at 100% on his own. Um, he's not walking, but he is yet on his way to walking. Um, he's talking. So I know when he gets ready to form words, he's going to be a kid that you have to tell to be quiet because he loves to talk. Um, but I could not be more grateful for the child that I have. And oftentimes when it comes to a blessing, it's not wrapped up or packaged up in the way that we were expecting. And so we don't consider it still a blessing because of the way it looks or it didn't come the way we wanted it to. So we demise or, you know, kind of shun away what the blessing really is. But I'm so grateful to God that he's still here. I'm so grateful to God that um, we are allowed it, the opportunity to be his parents. Um, my precaution would be um, setting him up to further his progress because of his challenges. My pre my precaution would be to make sure that he's at every doctor's appointment, that he's at every therapist appointment, that he's at every um, appointment that's necessary to continue his growth. And so um, I don't think without science, without medicine, without God, that uh, he would have gotten this far. So I'm extremely grateful and we are excited to see what God is gonna do next. So that's my birthing story of my son at this age at 14 months. So yes, sis, you got a seven month old. So let us know about BJ or not BJ about, uh, Brayden. <laughs> okay. So, um, like you said, Brayden is my youngest. Um, Kennedy is my baby that came without any pain. She was sick when she got to me, praise God. Um, and I had Kaylee, um, C-section. She was stuck in the birth canal as well. Um, and it sent me on a downward spiral with postpartum psychosis, postpartum depression. I did not want any more kids. I didn't want to look at kids. I didn't like the word kids any of that. And so um, when she was five months, I found out I was pregnant with BJ and I was like, what in the world? I just stared at my husband like, I blamed it on, is you crazy? I blamed it on him like it was a one person sport. Um, but I had BJ um, and then I made up in my mind that I wasn't going to suffer the way that I did with Kaylee. Um, so I hired a doula. I said, I'm not having a C-section. I want to do this the right way. Um, all of my stuff was lining up until about 33 weeks. Uh, they said I couldn't have a VBAC at the hospital I was at. I left that hospital in 33 weeks and went somewhere that was more conducive to the care that I wanted. Um, and after that, after I had him, I had him naturally on Christmas. Christmas Eve, I looked at my husband. I said, yeah, I'm probably going to have this baby before the weekend's up. He said, you're not going to have a baby on Christmas. I'm like, I bet you I had this baby before the weekend up. Um, so I had him on Christmas. Our doula, she came in labor with us because of COVID. She couldn't come to the hospital with us, but she was on phone the entire time. Coaching my wonderful husband. I call him Daddy Doula because he was my doula in that point. Um, you know, coaching him through all of that. And then I, I took the natural route for my healing, but I still suffered greatly with postpartum anxiety. Um, just being, I mean, just the smallest touch, the smallest sound, it would just send me over edge. Um, and so I definitely didn't want any more children. And then I got pregnant with Brayden. When I got pregnant with Brayden, BJ was. And he was almost two. I don't remember. Um, but when I got pregnant with, with Brayden, BJ was almost two years old. Um, BJ was still breastfed. So I'm already anxious. I'm already touched out. I'm now pregnant. And at 19 months, I looked at my baby and I was like, hey, this is done. We're, we can't do this anymore. And so I winged him like that night, like, hey, here's a bottle. Sorry. Um, and that left me in a space of being resentful that I was mm -hmm. pregnant again. I had a lot of resentment. And so I had to have conversations with uh, with one of my mentors. And I was like, hey, listen, I have a lot of resentment. I had just started working on myself, just started getting in the space of self-love, going to the gym again, eating healthy. And now I'm pregnant again. Wow. I'm already a stay-at-home mom. I don't want to do this again. I mean, I know mm -hmm. I don't have a choice, but I don't want to do this again. And so she talked to me and she said, but don't look at it like that. Look at it from the perspective of you get to do this again. Yeah, you get to carry yeah. another person in your body. You get, and I'm just like, but what about the sleepless nights and the anxiety? And she said, you're gonna be anxious and not sleeping for far greater things. Why are you worried about that? And mm -hmm. so I, I had to be honest with my husband, and I had to tell him that I resented him 
because I was pregnant again and I was staying at home and he was still able to go to the gym and he was still going to work and he was still enjoying his life. And here I am throwing up sick. All the things in my mind was stuck on the fact that I was going to be, um, that I was going to be, you know, after I had his baby, I'm going to be tired, anxious. I could slip into postpartum psychosis again. Like, I don't want to deal with right. any of that. And so um, he looked at me. He said, well, choose what you want to do. What do you want to do? You have all the knowledge necessary. By this time, I was a doula. So I had mm -hmm. all the education, all the things. And so I chose that I was going to enjoy my pregnancy and I was going to live my life. And so um, I started doing stuff like taking my vitamin D, ashwagandha, all the things early on before I had him. Um, when he got here, whenever my anxiety would rise, I had a regimen. I knew what it was. When I was tired, I didn't, I wasn't too tired to delegate. I don't right. want nobody coming over here holding this baby. Could y'all please come and make sure he eat while I go to sleep? Right. And so one day I remember being so tired and I had already told myself that I wasn't going to get to that place again. And Brayden's godmother had came over, um, Leah, and she had came over and she said, I'm going to sit with the baby so I can go take a nap. Y'all, I went to go take a nap. I came up, came back. My house was clean. My wow. dishes were washed. My kids had eaten. They were sitting down watching TV. And I just looked at her and she just hugged me and left. Like, what in the unicorn do you have going on? <laughs> and so um, for me, that that put my, the precaution that I had been taking to protect my kids from people. Yeah. To being able to use my precaution to delegate, to utilize their village, to allow the people that love them to show up for them and to keep them from the ones that don't. I can control that. And yes. so I think that right now with just Brayden, um, for Brayden, just from having Brayden, that the that the precaution that I take is making sure that my kids are surrounded with true love. And then mm -hmm. while they're surrounded with that love, allowing those people to utilize that space, allowing them to pick them up. Allowing them yeah. to sit at the house with them, allowing myself a break, allowing people to hold my baby. Like with BJ and Kaylee, I don't know if anybody remember, but I don't think I, I've been knowing all y'all for a while. Y'all knew y'all knew me when I had BJ and Kaylee, but I bet you yes. nobody can count on one hand how many times y'all held them. Nah. Because I was nah. so cautious. Yeah. I didn't pass. And then if you see Brayden now, I'm like, who won't Brayden? Anybody want Brayden? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, because I trust my village. And sometimes I'll have the stroller at church and people will look at me and say, where are your kids? And I'll be like, somewhere around this church, but I trust my entire, entire village that they'll yeah. get back to me in one piece. Right, right. I trust that they're going to get back to me in one piece. Y'all know me well enough to know that I don't play about my kids. So I'm trusting yes. that they'll get back to me in one piece. <laughs> so I think that's where my, um, where my precaution stands right now is to love them enough to allow the people around them to love on them so that they're not so scared of the world that they don't pull on people for what they need. So mm -hmm. that's where I'm at right now. I love that. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> Okay, sis at the bottom. Now, since you started all the way over, okay? Your oldest is 22. Okay, your middle is 19. He'll be 19. That's boyfriend. That's boyfriend. Just so, just so y'all know, that's boyfriend. <laughs> He'll be 19 in November, and then you started over with baby girl. Sis. Yes. How I know. different is that? That is so different. I'm sure. Gen generationally, it's different. Yeah. It's I noticed the difference. I think before Zaria was one, I noticed the difference mm -hmm. because she was actually talking at four months. She said her first word. It was like, hey, and oh. it was in an authoritative way. RJ at that time, he had worked nights and I was working days and he called me. He said, I thought somebody was in this house. <laughs> somebody said, hey, and it was the baby. I said, wow. Okay. Are you are you like losing sleep? You know, okay. Uh, it was the baby, and so I was like, okay, this one is gonna be a little bit different. Yeah, she has honestly, she has Monique and Keon qualities in her, mm -hmm. but she still she has her own like personality. I'm Zaria. This is yeah. me. But yeah, it's different with Monique. Um, I don't even know if everybody remember because she's so old now. <laughs> but I don't do that. Her. Don't do that. She I know. Young. I know. I had her early. I had her um uh, now they wouldn't consider it early, but at that time they gave me 24 hours with her. Wow. They said love on her, hug on her, because this is it. Wow. And uh, she tells people I had I had my first helicopter ride at uh hours old, you know, because they had <laughs> I had her at Providence Medical Center. Mm -hmm. and uh it was the closest hospital at that time and they uh was trying to reverse and keep the medication coming to stop the labor mm -hmm. and it did nothing she was actually born in the sack 
So they had wow. the yeah, I didn't it, so they called them veil babies or something. But they said she um if she survives, she might not have a lot of uh they said she may have some like mental retardation mm -hmm. and something was going on with her lungs. And I was like, well, do what y'all got to do to save my baby. And yeah. we'll talk, let's take one minute. Let's take a minute by minute. I wasn't even at that point. I wasn't even taking an hour by hour because I was a teen mom. We were young. And so I was like, listen, all I know is I had grandmama praying on one side, Anareen praying on the other. And we was like, we just going to take this minute by minute by minute. And the next thing you know, Monique was over at Children's Mercy and they were unplugging stuff day by day. And it wasn't because she was declining. It was because she was improving. Mm -hmm. And Monique's, uh, what they tell me, they said, well, if she survives, you know, we get her, I think it was like into a week of her Children's Mercy stay. They said, we, we project about six months to a year for her to stay here. And I'm like, okay, I got to know the Ronald McDonald Foundation very well. We did and too. I said, well, we, yeah. I said, <laughs> yeah. 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 Shout out we to did them. too. They are so okay. Good. Because they couldn't be in clutch. They really did. They really <laughs> took good care of us. But she, she only stayed a month. Like Monique was at her own baby shower. Really? Yeah, she only stayed a month. Wow. Yeah, she still has like as she uh has asthma mm -hmm. and she takes several medications a day. Monique ended up I think she ended up graduating high school with a 4.2 GPA. I know that's right. Yeah, like you can, God is so good. Let me tell, yes. you, let me tell you one thing and the kid will turn out completely different. Completely different. <laughs> completely different Monique she's so she's such a humble kid but she had excelled in like everything she touched that's amazing yeah it was and it was by God's grace and mercy. mercy I tell you when you are mom like I signed myself out of the hospital against medical advisory <laughs> I'm like listen I gotta go see about my baby yeah and um uh, so it I Monique and I grew up together Mm -hmm. Then, then I thought I was grown, and I had Keon. Keon yeah. was—he's my cool breeze. He really just—he was over. T he was almost eleven pounds. I had no medication. Oh my god! You I, gave no, him that no, weight no, naturally. No, that's a lie. That's a lie. I was about to say I, had, I, I didn't have medication with Zaria. With Monique, I didn't have time because the, the they were really trying to keep her from you know coming so and early. then Keon I did I had an epidural and I'm glad I did because that was yeah that <laughs> pushing out an 11 pounder whoo yeah God. he was big I didn't I didn't realize how big Keon was until maybe his third month and I was like and this kid kind of big <laughs> <laughs> Monique, Monique caught up to her birth weight and like excelled off the charts. So at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm used to having big, solid babies. Yeah. Then Zaria. I was 35, 36 when I had Zaria. It is so different. Really? It is completely different. Yeah. So RJ, RJ has no, no children. Uh -huh. Um, he, uh, <laughs> this was his <laughs> this was his first child uh -huh. and rj being a first-time parent was going into it like yeah this is gonna be great i've seen this in it all was the movies yeah and me and i'm sitting over here like oh my god okay <laughs> we this can't be that bad because i did it at 18 and then yeah. i did it at 21 and my body was like girl you stupid <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> my body was like yeah okay we'll see right because 35 and 36 is different than 18 21 it is I don't very know, i'm 30 but i'm just saying it's different yeah it's yeah. it's different even it at is. five years i was like whoa what just happened and <laughs> i found myself rj was calling me at one point like he was like why are you why are you scooting like that when you walk? <laughs> because I feel like this baby is like sitting just 
like posted up on my pelvic. It was just, yes. it was, I felt every, what I didn't feel in my, in my teens, of course at 18 and then at 21, um, I felt with Zaria. Zaria, mm -hmm. she, yeah, she was like, I am here. Uh, I don't know what you old folks is doing, but <laughs> I'm about to make my way. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's really good. I always find it so interesting to hear other people's birthing stories. Because, of yeah. course, they all are different. But then when you have multiple children and then you find out all of those birthing stories were different, I yeah. love, to, love to hear. A.T. Shonda. Your turn. Now, I have had the privilege of watching the two of your children grow up. Love them dearly. Zion is an awesome young man. Zaria, that's my girl. So I know with having children that are of the opposite sex, one a boy, one a girl, what was the difference between the two of them growing up? Oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh at this question and I'm I'm and I'm kind of glad you brought it up because me and Tam joke all the time that I keep telling her that these Zarias are yeah. different. See? I told her when See? she had Zaria, I said, I'm, I'm staying away from Zarias. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you now. Yeah. Zarias are different. And so yeah. being, uh, Zion first was my blessing. God was mm -hmm. preparing me as a parent because Zion was very, like, like you just said about uh, your son. Yeah. Uh, um, Zion was like my cool breeze. He was easy. Yeah. I like he only he only needed to eat. That was his only. <laughs> <laughs> if you gave up child some food, I don't care what age it is. Yeah. So with ZJ, I mean, it was real easy. I had the birthing story of him is real simple. I mean, it was it's a typical birthing story. I was, I got up one morning, I felt funny. His dad was like, are you going to have the baby? I was like, I don't know. He said, okay, call me. And yeah. Said, call me if you do. Of course, and my dad was living at the time. And my dad was like, if you have this child when I'm out of town, I'm going to be mad at you. And of course I did. Oh, man. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I ended up having Zion. Um, that, but it was a natural birth. I, everything was natural. Um, I did have, you know, the medicine and the epidural and everything. Um, Zaria, same way. Um, Zaria and Zion are five, between five and six years apart. Mm -hmm. So, um, she was just as easy, except she caused me the most pain. Zion's was easy. Zion, I just did the typical stuff like nose spreading, you know, the feet swelling, all yeah. that. But Zaria, like, whew, it was Zaria, rough. She hit me all in my side, y'all. I couldn't breathe. And when I was walking, I couldn't. Oh Lord, it was so bad. And so I was like, listen, is there a way that we can like plan for her and kick her out? And my doctor's <laughs> like, Yeah, I said, Well, let's do that. Let's right, right. Kick her out. So we did. I had a so my only difference from the two births were that I planned Zarya's um out and mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, necessarily plan Zion. Um, but when you talk about night and day difference, they are definitely night and day generation wise they're night and day yeah. but not but they are boy and girl they're night and day so mm -hmm. it's just it's been like real fun watching how um uh oh Say something again. Mm -hmm. Okay, Auntie Shauna's going to work out her sound. And so while so she works her sound works out, out, we'll move to the next topic. So now that we know... We know the children's birthing stories, which are amazing. And I love to hear different people's birthing stories because I like to 
hear how hear excited how they are when they tell the story now that everything has already passed. And no more no pain. More and I already pushed them out. them out. All of that type of stuff. stuff. So it's always so good to hear, hear when, when someone else is telling their birthday story. story. So the next, so the next one, one is protection. protection. Now, what I now, like what to about the protection, about the protection is, is All right. Okay. My apologies all for the audio issue. Trying to get Auntie Shonda sound back on. I'm back. All right. So that you all can hear what she's saying. I apologize for the interruption, but thank you all so much for being patient. All right. So the next one is protection. Now that we have gotten all of our birthing stories out of the way, We've gotten past all the hurt and all of that good stuff that comes along with carrying, childbirth, and all that. Let's talk about protection. Now, the one thing that I want to discuss when it comes to protection is when to protect and when to let go. Now, I know as moms, as parents, we have a tendency to just want to protect all the time, everywhere, each child, even their friends, all of that. It's just something that's in us. It's in our DNA. It's just something I think that just comes with being a parent. It's an automatic thing once you're a mom. It's an automatic thing once you're a dad. Um, it's an automatic thing once you're a guardian. It's just something that's in you that naturally wants to protect. So in you all's opinion, what do you feel when is the necessary time to protect and to hold close and when to release and let go and let grow and blossom and experience? Um, sis and auntie, specifically more so for you two, because you have children that are no longer in the house. They're out in college and experience, experiencing life and, you know, driving and they have jobs. So what do you all have to say about that? Did you want to start or Auntie, you want to start? I'll start. Okay. I think for me, God, it forced me to learn to let go. Mm -hmm. Um, With my, so with Monique, when she went off to college, that was the same year that I had Zaria. So my life oh. was changing. Like, like a lot of stuff was changing. Yeah. Um, and so I had to, I was like super excited. I'm like, yes, she going to college. She going to HBCU. She going to one of RJ and our favorite places. And I allowed her to really pick her own school. Cause I'm like, I don't want to force you into school. And you're not going to stay because it's not something that you wanted. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we all went down there and support. And I was doing good. Look, I even went out <laughs> and kicked it one night. Like, I was doing really, really good until we got until it was time to leave. And when I got in the car and pulled off, I was, like, bawling. And I knew, I knew that she was going to be okay. It was just the point, like, and I can't kick doors in no more. <laughs> <laughs> right right I can't you know I can't say I'm on my way mm -hmm. in 15 minutes if something was to go wrong because she's 13 hours away yeah and now she knows I will drive or get on a plane bus yeah. train but it <laughs> might take me longer you know and so I think in that situation and then with Keon's situation boys are different mm -hmm. you really have to it, um allow them to bump their head and that's the hardest thing for me is allowing the kids to bump their head but then here comes God and like saying well you gonna you gonna keep stressing yourself out oh okay because this is happening and so you need to as a parent you need to learn when I say back away it mm -hmm. doesn't mean let go it doesn't mean that you're a horrible parent it's just meaning they have to find their own way in me. So yeah. everything that you have taught them in Christ 
and with God, now they have to learn to apply it. Now they have to use it. And I, I can become, a, I can be like controlling at times. And I didn't see that at first. I'm like, I'm not a control freak. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Yes, I am. <laughs> and so I, you know, sometimes I just want to say, don't worry about it. I'll do it. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I'll do it. And um, God has taught me, you're messing up my plans for them because I trusted you for 18 years with them. Yeah. Now you give them back to me and let me have a relationship with them mm -hmm. so that they can learn how to live as an adult. And that has been the most challenging thing for me. It sounds easy, sounds comforting, but yeah, it's 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 been a challenge. God has kept me in peace with it. Yeah. There have been times that I've cried and I pray. And they're not they're not horrible kids. It's just they're trying to find their own way. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like you want to tell them, hey, chill out. Like I've been there. Yeah. You know, when the kids are little and they put their hand on the, on the, or they reach for the stove and you're able to squat their hand away before they get burned. Yeah. When they're, when they're that age, you can't always squat their hand away. Like they yeah. literally have to, you know, burn themselves in order to find out how it is. Mm -hmm. And as a parent, as a mom, because we are so, we are programmed to be so emotional. When we watch them make mistakes, we cry. Well, at least I do. I'm like, Lord. <laughs> it's not an easy thing to see a child that you birth, that you love, that you care for, and venture into the world because you know how it is. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. You know how cruel it could be. You know how uh, I don't give a care they could be. Um, mm -hmm. How inconsiderate. You know, people in the world can be, and then that's my child. So the last thing I want to see is them go out into the world and get knocked upside the head by it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And so it's a lot of things that I feel are instilled into us to prepare us for the world. But that don't mean it ain't going to knock you, okay? That don't mean it ain't going to ram your head a few times in between the wash and dryer, okay? Because I promise you, it's going to be something out there that you're going to run into that you're not going to be looking for but it's going to address you or approach you and you just going to hope that you can pull on whatever it is that your mom and dad put inside of you to get you past the situation or to get you through the situation. Uh, Amy, what about you? What, um, Zion is 23, a working young man, a young man that's driving, a young man that is out here in the world experiencing life and, you know, uh, handling business. Uh, what, what is your take on protection? Because you have a, a daughter and a son. I do. So is the protection different when it comes to the two? It does feel that way sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, I share with Tam about that story too, about driving away and then me like, Jesus, I just left them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Zion yeah. was actually sitting. Um, so the first, so Zion took a year off after uh, high school and he decided that he wanted to go to Jeff City. So we went to LU. I was like, okay, cool. This is great. This is not far right. away. Right. All right, right. So we get down there and I'm doing all the things. I'm, I'm My sister's with me and we doing all the stuff, getting this room together and doing all these things. And I'm thinking I'm going to be straight, just like Tim said. I'm thinking I'm going to be good. Zion sat on the curb and watched us pull off. And I immediately started choking back tears like I felt like I was leaving him at daycare for the first time and he was like mama you leaving me here and I was like I don't want to like I wanted to pull back around and go get my baby it was it was rough for me but I will say this about him oh man I oh, have God. girl it, made, <laughs> it makes me oh my gosh I was so emotional but it makes me appreciate what we instilled in him from junk Mm -hmm. Because I've watched Zion um, take college and really analyze the things that he wants to do in his life. He's always a thinker. So I, the one thing I want to point out with him in particular is he was really thinking about pledging. And I'm, I'm all about it because I, you know, I thought about pledging and I'm still thinking about grad chapter Zetas and all that kind of stuff. Thought about it. But Zion was going to pledge out. 
And I'm telling the story because I think he would be okay with me sharing it. And so he got to thinking about it and he's been praying, he was praying about it. And he was, he started the process and he go, went through it and he was like, okay, I'm gonna do this. Da, 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 da. And then he was like, what am I doing? And so then he started reading and started praying about it and started looking at videos and Zion is, I told you he's like a, a analyzer. He's a Leo. So he thinks all the time. And so I was like, okay, well, what are you thinking Zion? And he said, mama, it's just something spiritually that I'm battling with it. I don't like, it's something in me that is telling me I just don't need to do this. Anything that my God can't know about or I can't let the world, he was like, it's something about this is just not setting well with me. And I said, well, listen, if God is telling you that it's not sitting well with you, that means that you don't need to do it. I know that's right. So it made me feel good as a parent because that makes me feel like, okay, everything that we instilled in him, all the God that we have prayed in him, it it manifested itself yeah. in that. and i'm not uh, again i'm not not nearby um discounting or or talking down on greek life that is everybody's walk with god is different but for my mm -hmm. son right he didn't feel like that that was for him and i'm just i'm grateful for that kind of thought process with Zion because it might take him a little while to follow through with whatever it is that he needs to do because he's going to analyze it to death. But once he gets it in his spirit that this is what I'm doing, that's what he's that's doing. A done deal. Yeah. So I appreciate God for that. Cause that, that is something that just, uh, it amazes me. Cause I'm like, where does it get that from? Who is that? <laughs> where is that coming from? But Zofri is my determined baby. So she is the, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Wait a minute. Should I do it? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Uh, wait a minute. It don't look right. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. No, I'm not gonna do it. And then I'll be like, what is it that, you know, what is holding you back? And so when I give her, it depends on what it is. Um, like cheerleading was the big thing for her. Now I'm, I'm telling this story. It might make y'all cry, but I don't know if y'all seen some of my posts, but Zarya had a huge, like she wasn't the best cheerleader when she started but she started ever since the ravens like little girl like she has always been in cheer so she always tried to do this toe touch toe touch never like was bomb but she tried she tried she always for every year she got better she got better she got better this year zarya's toe touch is out here like legs feet pointed it's so phenomenal but as a mother what makes me feel good and i Side note, y'all know this, but for those who don't, I'm also one of the coaches. So as a mom and a coach, watching her push herself every year to get to that point, y'all should have seen her when she first tried out. It was video tryouts. And she was the cutest little, uh, just not ugly duckling, but awkward duckling you've ever seen in your life. Like cute little glasses, little poop ball, all that kind of stuff. And she was just like, mama, I don't know if I can do this. No, you can and I, I remember myself not necessarily pushing her for me because I did it, but pushing her for her because I saw the potential in her. And it just made me, it did something to me now. Just, oh Lord, y'all don't want to get me talking about my daughter because I don't know what it is about moms and daughters, but just to see that, <clears throat> that extension of you and, and to see that grow and push. Yeah. I'm telling you, every time I look at all the senior things she's doing right now, like there's another picture of her and she's holding a girl up and it's a stunt, but she's holding her by herself in the air, extended. And I'm just looking at her like, this is the same child that didn't even want to jump or try out. This is the same child that was scared. And look at her now, like the, the growth in her, just it absolutely amazes me. So I will say my advice um, and the protection part, don't worry so much. Just give it to God because the most, the more you pray and the, and you trust that that what you put in them and what you have instilled around them and and sealed in them, that's going to show itself eventually. It may come way later. It may come early. I don't know. I've seen parents that have prayed for their kids for years, and finally that child came, you know, to the realizations that they needed to come to, or you see them come in church one day, or you. All those things will come to pass, but you just got to keep praying. That's all I'm going to say. You just got to keep trusting that God is going to do what he promised you that he will do for your baby. So that's that's my protection because my protection is him. That's <laughs> it. The key protection. Uh, I yes. love that. And one of the two things, and it says, I'm going to get to you. 
the two things that I like that you all said was protecting them from themselves. You know what I mean? Um, wanting to give them the opportunity to bump their own heads or be determined or make their own decision about what it is that they want to do. Um, I love the fact that when I was growing up, my mom and dad, they were strict, but they gave us leeway. Mm -hmm. They weren't so strict to where we couldn't do anything, couldn't go anywhere, couldn't hang out or anything like that. But I love that you all, that you two were so confident in who you are as parents and who you are, who you get your, your um, direction from, if you know what I mean, to where you'll be able to guide and lead the children that you have birthed and to know where they are now, because they're doing amazing. They're in college, they're driving, they ain't in no trouble. They ain't hanging with the wrong crowd. You know what I mean? Uh, when they are in town, they're in church, they call in, checking on you, texting you, talking to you. So I love to see that whatever you put into your child comes back. Does that make sense? I love to see that. Sis, let me get to you. Now, with you and I having children that are small, our protection mm -hmm. and level of protection is different. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, sis and Amy and I have already done their job because their kids have adventured off. They're doing their thing. All right, I gave you the tools you need. Now, let's see what you're going to mm -hmm. do. With, with mm -hmm. us, we still trying to do that. Okay, yeah. we're still trying to do the installing of putting that into our children so we can't help but protect. What is yeah. your give or your take on protection? Because you have four. You have yeah. a bonus and you have three of your own. Yeah. So for me, I would say um, opposed to, um, you know, them, they're they're trying to protect their kids from themselves in some situations. For me, I'm trying to protect my kids for themselves yeah. so that they have something to walk in and stand on as they get older. Um, So That's right cool. now I'm not. I don't get to say, hey, just do this. Like, I have to be the protection. Um, so, for instance, with Kennedy, Kennedy's 13. Um, and I don't know if any of you know, but Kennedy does not live in Kansas City anymore. Um, gosh, dog. No I tears. Uh, my baby is over 400 miles away. And so she has, I'm her bonus mom. So she's a wonderful mom and a wonderful dad. But since she was six years old, we've done this thing together. Um, God has allotted um, her other dad we don't we just say other her other dad um an opportunity to do some amazing things and so with his purpose there caused a pivot in our family um and so it was hard um mm -hmm. and it is hard we FaceTime her every day and so sometimes I don't think Brent has noticed yet but he's hearing me talk so he's gonna know now sometimes he gets on FaceTime and he's like hey you want to talk to her and I'm like please do not bring that phone over here because yeah. I miss my baby and so before she left, the protection I gave her was the affirmations um, to remind her who she is, that you're going into a new space where you are allowed to conquer this space in the fullness of everything that you are. No, Nothing right. that has ever happened here. And she's a very good kid, makes very good grades. You know, outside of a, a little middle school stuff with friends, you mm -hmm. know, she, there was no, we never had issues with her. And so um, you're going into a new space where you get to be all the way Kennedy. Fully Kennedy, the nerdy Kennedy that sits and reads books, the the Kennedy that loves what she loves and does what she does. And you get to be all of that. And I want you to go and embrace all of that. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's not just a new start for your mom or for your dad or for your brother or for your sister. It's a new start for you as well. And mm -hmm. so I sent her off with the affirmations. Um, you know, and the confidence of who she is. And I sent her this long message before she started school. And then uh, it was a Facebook post that popped up where she said, um, I can't remember what exactly she said, but it was like an encouragement to herself. And I was able to send that to her. She said that when she was eight years old and it was just applicable to that moment. So now I'm protecting her from here, knowing that she's good, she's covered, but God forbid anything happen. Yeah. I, ha I, have, flight I have a flight credit that I will not touch. Because it belongs to those 446 miles, okay? I know that's, that's right. Where, that's where it belongs to. It's a round way, it's a round way trip. Okay. It's a few trips if I book it on the right Tuesday. You feel me? Right. So I feel it. it. We have it locked and loaded. Um, and then we have the, the plans. The plans are, you know, in the works for her to be able to come here and do all the things. But it's so hard because yeah. she is 13. And But that's my dog. Like, you know, uh, I mean, when I say locked in, locked in. And that, okay. And that's just a minute. Cause we didn't used to be like that. So there was a lot that I tried to pour into her that she was not receptive of because I'm not her mother. Right. But then somewhere right. down the line, the appreciation grew for, for who I am in her life. 
as mm -hmm. an addition to the amazing mother. I'm like, do you know how fortunate it is that you got four amazing parents? Like you don't got like a half of a parent here. You got four right. whole, whole parents. parents. And so I'm able to pour a lot into her. Um, and not even from a perspective of just her as my daughter, but who I'm able to pour a lot into her as a woman, as the woman she's gonna be. She's yeah. 13. I'm gonna look up one day soon and she'll be graduating. Yeah. And I, and I want to, I want what I have poured in her to be able to come out. So mm -hmm. I'm pouring, pouring, pouring. She probably like, mommy, don't send me another text, an affirmation, uh, you looking in the mirror, recording nothing else to me. Okay. Right. But I'm trying to pour into her so that I'm not protecting her from herself, but I'm protecting her for herself. So that's mm -hmm. the thing with her. With the youngest three, um, I was a stay-at-home mom up until August. So um, in June, I started a job. The kids were going to the church summer camp um, where their dad was. And uh, Brayden was coming to work with me. Um, he still comes to work with me until October the 2nd. I cannot <laughs> wait. Uh, <laughs> but um, the protection looks different for them because they are so younger. So, for instance, Kaylee started school uh august the 21st it is september the 23rd and she no longer attends that school as of last monday because okay. of what i've know what i noticed in her um she was coming home real mouthy um bucking at us all the things and so all y'all know my daughter y'all know that's not her character whatsoever and so there were a few other things that the school that she told me happened at school that mm -hmm. a four-year-old cannot make up especially one that's right. been at home her entire life so these right. are things that i knew had to be true I went yeah. to the school. They took accountability for every almost everything, but accountability doesn't negate what had happened. Right. And so I right. had to make a decision. It was a very hard decision. I kept her home on a Monday. Please don't do that. I kept her home on a Monday um, to kind of process and go to the school and talk to them and all of that. And that, e that after I talked to them, I was just going back and forth. And I was like, God, do I pull her from this? Do we, do I pull her from anything that, that, shows any resemblance of things that are not true or do I strengthen her character to always look like you? what Ooh, do I do that's good like, how do I handle this and so Ka Kaylee is very intuitive Kaylee's a dreamer Kaylee hears from God Kaylee will walk up on you and say something that God told her and baby we roll with it because we believe in the prophetess okay we know okay. what she's saying is going to be true the day before I had Brayden she had fell off the couch and we had to go to the ER and all that and I said Kaylee when am I going to have this baby because I was already overdue she said you're going to have him in the morning I went into labor that morning, the 15th, we took her to the hospital on February 14th, February 15th. I was in labor. I had that baby within six hours. Wow. Before the, before the sun even was hardly up, I had a baby in my arms. And so wow. we listened to Kaylee when Kaylee talked. So I looked at Kaylee. Okay. I said, Kaylee, I said, Kaylee, does God want you to go back to that school? She said, no, because Jesus doesn't love me. And I said, whoa, time, time, out, time, out, time yeah. out. Time out. Hold I on. Said, oh. Where did we get that from? And so she said, my teacher, and she said the teacher's name. Mind you, this is the only teacher she does not call by name. She can never remember the lady's name. She always calls her the other one teacher. And she said, my teacher, Miss So-and-so, said that Jesus doesn't love me. Wow. I said, that is my answer. Because yeah. I can strengthen your character all day long, but you are four years old. I have to protect you for you. That's done. And so I pulled her from the school. She will be going to my homegirl instance because I know. What's hey, up. she to go. Okay. Her. She and to so go to schooling. Okay. Do you hear me? <laughs> so it was my concern. I can't wait till Khalil get that age. Listen. Because I, I, when I went over there just yesterday to kind of, you know, look at everything and see all the things, my baby, who only sits up, turned on all fours and attempted to crawl. He picked up a toy, fixed it to play with. I said, God, you ain't got to show me nothing else. The atmosphere is conducive for growth. My kids will be here. Yes. That's, what it, that's what it boils down to. But anywho, so I was concerned. So one of my biggest concerns with pulling her from the program was that she wouldn't be able to go to University Academy because she's in their pre-K program. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, dang it. Lord, I know you said she was supposed to be here. But... If you're pulling her from that, then I believe that you have something greater for her. So it is what it is. The lady emailed me. She said, go ahead and pull her from the program because you're right. That school does not match the character of who we are. She'll be fine for kindergarten. Your boys are still legacy. And University Academy is always home for them. So I ain't got I no concern. Right. But it took me buckling down to protect them. I mean, I, I told my husband, I said, listen, when it boiled down to it, I'll pull everybody from school, quit this job, move off grid, raise my kids and bring them back from the wilderness when they ready. I'm not playing when it comes to mine. I'm not playing because I know that there is something far greater in them. And I and God told me a long time ago, like people say, my kids this, my kids that. I call them my kids. Yes, I say that, but they don't belong to me. I have yeah. one task. My only task is to put in them what God has told me to put in them so they can be who God wants them to be. 
That's period. it. That's period. it. So if anything that I do is contrary to that, leaving them in schools that they shouldn't be because I want them to do something. Anything that I do, if it's contrary to what God is telling me to do, then guess what? I'm out of line. Yeah. Because their life is not my, this is not my life. My only obligation to them is to love them and grow them in the way of the Lord. And then when it's time to go on, still mentor them from the background, let the Lord have his way with them. Yeah. But that that, that means making the hard decisions to protect them. That's my baby it. came home, didn't want to say her grace no more. Nope. We're done. Because yeah. all things, all things God. It may look good, but if it ain't God, it don't work for this house. So 1827 dwells on God and God alone. And when Period. it comes to the little crew, I'm protecting you from anything that don't look like God. Okay. So all the stuff that the world try to throw at them, and I know I can't protect them from everything, and I'm not saying that. But what I can do is be a safeguard for it. So I'm That's not it. protecting them from themselves, but I'm protecting them for themselves. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna mute my mic because I'm gonna start going. Okay. Because <laughs> listen, I'm a shout. Period. Because I'm gonna shout. Um, I'm gonna make this real quick. Then we're gonna move to the next one. So when Khalil was in the NICU, and I'm also glad that I have a village that protects. Because when you have, when you can't do it on your own or when you're in the midst of going through a battle and you have people that are on the sides in the background in front of you that can protect you as well as what it is that you just produced, that's even greater because that means the enemy ain't got no room to get nowhere. So we, Khalil's in the NICU, they are uh, kind of like gathering all the information, gathering all the paperwork to get ready to release them. And so there was this particular caseworker and she started off nice in the beginning, really sweet, really kind, gave us all the information we needed to know to further Khalil's progress and things like that. And so uh, it was an a incident where we were in Khalil's room. It was me and my mom. Son was asleep. Me and mom were, you know, conversing, talking. She comes in the room and she finds out that Khalil is getting ready to be released. And so the only thing that could come out of her mouth is, well, we don't know what his process is going to look like. We don't know if um, he's going to, you know, make it past a certain amount of time or a certain amount of years. And the only thing I heard her say, the only thing I heard her speak out of her mouth was death. There was no life in her voice. And it ticked me off. And what my mom did was she told her what she had to say in Jesus' name. She didn't cuss her out. She didn't, didn't get disrespectful. She prayed on the doorpost and the lady walked out. Do you know from that day on, that lady never came back? Never came back. She never came back. She will see me in the hall. She would avoid talking to me. She would avoid saying anything to me. And so when I had to get all the paperwork signed for us to be released, I said, I don't want that caseworker. I need you to give me somebody else because I don't want to talk to her. Her spirit and mine don't agree. So therefore she needs to be dismissed. <laughs> we don't want to deal with her no more. But I said that to say this, when you said protecting them for them, that was a perfect example of me protecting my son for him. Because had I let her continue to say what she had to say, she's speaking that over my son. And we didn't already declare the decree that God was going to do something. And what we don't want is you to combat what we said out of our mouths and speak anything else into his life. You're not doing that. So you won't even get past this doorpost, period. No, ma'am. And she never came back. So I protection is a thing, Okay. It is a thing where you know when to let go and you know how to keep keep close. At our children's age, we protect them for them. At your children's age, you do what you have to do to protect them while they're in your care and then send them on their way so that God can do the rest. Now this next one, okay? Sis, you said you had a lot you want to say about this one. Gentle parenting. Okay? Now listen. I first heard of gentle parenting on TikTok, right? And I was like, gentle parenting, what is that? So you had a lot of people giving examples of what gentle parenting was. And I was like, well, I don't think my son really qualifies that age group to be gentle parenting, you know, because we're not around the house cussing him out. You know what I mean? We're not whooping him or nothing. Like he's not at that age yet. I said, so let's speak a little bit on gentle parenting because I think gentle parenting is not in the way that you parent, but in the way that you are parenting. Does that make sense? Uh, I don't think every kid needs a whooping. I don't think every kid needs to be yelled and cussed at. Like, I, I totally disagree with that. Like, I really do. I really I really don't like when a parent, a parent feels that their kid has to be cussed at to get their point across or to get their kid to do something. Uh, sis, you got a four-year-old who has a big personality. <laughs> what is your take on gentle parenting? <laughs> uh, so, RJ, okay. So let me, before I get started on that, let me go back just a second because that touched on 
this morning and last night, RJ said, the enemy comes in so many different forms. Yes. And he will he will form himself into people just to make his way into your life. My so you goodness. have to be guarded. And when he said that, I was like, and that is so true. I never, yes. I never thought about that. But that was just to touch bases on what you both, what you guys were saying Perfectly about the said. teacher and the nurse. Uh -huh. And so when people, you know, when when the enemy, like RJ says, when the enemy forms himself into people, yeah, and sometimes they know that that they're being used by the enemy, and sometimes they have no idea, uh -huh. you know. And and so he said we have to be mindful and aware. You know, uh, when those situation arises, but I'm glad that you guys heard the call and did what y'all yeah, had to she do. Had to go. Now, as far as gentle parenting, that qualified RJ. I would, I would honestly say RJ is a gentle but stern parent. Me, I didn't grow up that way, so it's hard. The transition is yeah. very, very hard. I was so hard on my son, and there were days that now that I am older. And I'm doing this all over again with Zaria. There are things that I see that was my fault. Mm -hmm. And I was just so big on being stern with him because I was a single mom. So I'm like, I don't want to say that I'm playing both roles because I can't be a man. Like, I, I just, I can't. Physically, I'm not. Mentally, I'm not. You know, yeah. I, I so, but I was like, I got to be tough, 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 tough on him. And when he started to rebel, that was the reason. He wanted me to be that gentle parent. He wanted me to be like, hey, but now, mind y'all, this is teenage years. So it's like, kind of like, yes, I want you to be that gentle parent, but I also want to be able to master manipulate too, because I'm a boy and I want what I want. So mm -hmm. for me, I I couldn't figure it out quick enough, like whoa like which which one do I be which one you know um Zaria has a huge personality I think out of she does out of all three she bucks me the most like uh Monique and Keon they they tried it a little bit you know when they were her age of course but Zaria is like listen I'm about to force you to do something different and being major pain is not gonna work with me <laughs> <laughs> because I'm just not that type of kid. Yeah. And I honestly, I try to, as much as I can, I try to watch RJ and how he gentle parents. He Gentle parenting for real is this new generational thing. And I'm like, I just can't get with it because I feel like it's a way for them to do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Now, RJ is not a big person on like whoopings because he's like, well, you don't want to condition them to feel like this is love like this is okay you know yeah. it's it's it, put your foot down when you need to but don't always resort to whoopings first yeah and that is something that i've had to i had to work on because i'm like uh, uh where am i built to the point she's like are you gonna whoop me <laughs> <laughs> she like, she'll ask. like she'll bust out and be like are you gonna whoop me and I'm like okay this this ain't gonna work at all <laughs> and of course cursing you know even when when Monique and Keon were younger what I noticed is the change in the schooling system it's like oh boy like when I was coming out of high school I remember the key uh, my peers uh, being taught to say if you don't feel comfortable uh, if there's something going on at home you don't mm -hmm. have to be beat on well it was the kids that were just living normal lives not really getting beat on but they were you know getting disciplined yeah those were the kids that was like great this is my way out you know <laughs> and so kids take that and run with it and I started to see the shift in behavior with kids because now they like you, you with me I I outline you. They think yeah. they want that other side till they go. Yeah. But it's like that's when I started noticing the change. So now it's like I can't, it's 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 the battle of the world and your household. Like, what can I get away with to teach my kids sternly that 
the world is not going to be so nice. Mm -mm. And what can I do to teach them discipline without the world saying you're doing it wrong just to mess up my kids? Like, uh, I I cuss. Uh, yeah, I cuss. <laughs> I cuss and fuss. And I'm working on it. Listen, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I have yeah. not got there yet. And so I've had to really work on it with Zaria because Zaria will repeat what you say. And in, she at that whole, age too. In a whole sentence. So I've had to draw back and be like, okay, I bet I bet I better not say it that way. I better not say nothing <laughs> like that. But I try to, I really try to step back and watch. And sometimes I've even said, man, I wish I was the parent RJ is now, back when Monique and Keon were little. Yeah. But, you know, again, they kind of grew up with me. With this one, I think I've I've took RJ's approach in, uh, what did he call it? Uh, it's like when he's taking things away mm -hmm. and like becoming nonchalant. Like, well, I told you, if you don't do what we're asking you to do, I'm taking it away. And I can't care that you're crying. I can't. Because I want to yeah. and then be like, oh, look at her cry. You know, I done got soft. I got old and soft. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, oh, look at her cry. And RJ's like, well, let her sit there and cry. She ain't going to cry forever. But if we keep rewarding bad behavior, she's mm -hmm. not going to learn. So right. instead of a whooping all the time, just take away the stuff that she really, really, really likes. Mm-hmm. And that's everything. But just say, <laughs> take it away. Like I threw, we threw away toys. Like I literally said, no, if I, I, we're throwing them away. And I allowed her to watch me throw them away. Like, mm -hmm. mm -mm. So it's just, it's, it's, it's a little bit of give and take with this whole, gentle I think they say thing. gentle just to put a name on it, but if they out of line, listen, I told Monique one time, I said, you want me to come over there and get you all the way together? Because <laughs> you, you, you being 22 means nothing to me. But yeah. see, that's because I was raised by older people that would say mm -hmm. and do things like that. Yeah. And so I'm like, you being 22 means nothing to me. Like, I will still put you where I need to put you. Yeah. <laughs> But no, I, I mean, I get some of the concept, you know, you don't want to whoop, whoop, whoop all the time because mm -hmm. they be, they become accustomed to it. But some of that stuff, I'm like, nah, they they need a good laying of the hand. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's, it's necessary. You as a parent know your child. So you know what it yeah. is that you yep. can do as a form mm -hmm. of discipline. You know what I mean? Sis, with you having three little ones. I know there's some gentle parenting over there. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I'm pumped. I'm pumping as I go. Give me 2.5 seconds and I'm, okay. I'm going to be ready to rock and roll. Bet. Here you go. Amy, let's go to you. With Zarya being 17, nephew being 23, and them having a, a nice little age gap in between their ages. What is the difference between parenting Zion and parenting Zaria? Is there any gentle parenting in between the two since they're in two different generations? Was um, gentle parenting even around? No. When, when no, Zaria was, was no, a baby? No, no, ma'am. No, no. <laughs> None of that was around. Um, honestly, I always pattern my parenting style off mm -hmm. of a little bit of what I learned from my parents. Um but then with a twist, right? So mm -hmm. a little bit of what I felt like should be. So I, her father and uh, their father and I always believe that, you know, they should have some sort of a conversation with us. Like they should be able to talk to us and they should be able to express themselves in some kind of way, um, right. respectfully. You know, we, mm -hmm. we both agree to that. Um, now the older they get, that's when we started kind of like seeing differently <laughs> on that. But at the most, you know, we we always agree that they should have at least a, a time frame where they can talk to us about how they feel about what is happening. And then we, you know, acknowledge that. And then we come to some kind of a, a solution 
right. by the parent. Now, what is weird to me now is that, um, and, and nobody's talked about this, and this is my little parenting uh, issue that I have. I have a lot of mom guilt because mm. when you are a mother, when you used to be a mother who was completely married, so I was married for 19 years. So with Zaria, Zion kind of graduated right as we were, you know, getting the divorce. So he was pretty much grown and yeah. out the door. But with Zari, I found myself doing all the things. You know, I think I try, I probably did try gentle parenting at, at a point just so that she would not feel like, you know, mm. oh my God, the world is coming down on me. You know, I was really trying my best to like make it all happen for her. Like mm -hmm. probably overly spoiling, probably, you know, trying to make everything rosy and all this kind of stuff because it was just so much. And, um, I remember giving myself permission to say, wait a minute, let's let's take a step back. Yeah. And let's look at this thing because what you're not gonna do is let her talk to you like that. What I know you're not right. gonna do is let her walk around here and not do her chores. What you're not gonna do is raise her to think that the sun revolves, sits and rises in her behind. That's not what we're gonna do. And yeah. remember who you said you was gonna raise her to be. And when I finally kind of looked at that and I was like, oh yeah. No, we gonna have to, and I have a lot of mom guilt. I still do. Mm -hmm. I still do. Um, but I don't let that rule how I parent her. Yeah, because uh, Zari is the same way. You know, she's she's the mouthy one out the two. She's the one that'll say what she feels, and she's the one that'll give you her opinion quick. And I don't mind that, but I've always had to teach her. Okay, watch how you watch your tone. You know, yeah. watch how you say certain things. Um teaching her how to be considerate when she gets the things that she wants you know like this don't have to happen this is happening because i love you and yeah. i want you to have certain things but see those type of things come into play when you when you are actually consciously parenting and not just oh i just you know like like tam was saying is i know i have things to work on and i always tell my kids that that's one thing that i another thing that i might do that's maybe just parenting I'm quick to say, you know, mama wasn't right about this. Mm -hmm. I was upset at this point. I was angry. I'm dealing with something today. I'm not mentally okay. Whatever the case. And I'll tell them, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take Zaria gets it more than anybody has ever gotten it. So <laughs> me and her always have that, that camaraderie because she can tell me when she's not mentally okay. Like I'm, yeah. I'm not feeling today. Can I stay home from school because I'm just drained? Like, not necessarily tired, but I'm mentally just frustrated because this is yeah. going on and that's going on. I can understand that. And then I'll be like, no, she needs to, you know, she needs to have this time to herself. And I do the same thing with her. Or I can tell her, mom had a hard day or I'm upset about this particular thing. Maybe not right now, talk to me, but talk to me, you know, give me an hour. Yeah. Or I apologize because I went off on you because you came to me at the wrong time frame. So to me, that's just parent because yeah. according to what I went through when I was a kid, I wish my I listen. We would have told me, uh, ma'am, I don't give care nothing about your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Sit your tail down somewhere. I go tell, go do what I asked you to do, and right. talk to me after that's done. Like, right? I, uh, uh, no, that was not a thing. So I feel like I adopted some things, and I do feel like some things are necessary but i feel like all the things work together if you do it in the right way and you gotta know the right formulas for each child every child right. is not the same right so you gotta you gotta know the formulas for each kid because i could not parent zaria the way i parented zion zion right. was easy i didn't really have to say a lot zion knew my expectation from jump zaria i got to say it thirty thousand times but she <laughs> but she'll do it eventually yeah. But, you know, I, Zion was the pleaser. Zarya is not necessarily the pleaser, you know. So it's things like that. You have to know your kids and their personalities. Absolutely. That's for sure. Sis, you got three little ones over there. I know you didn't done some gentle parenting at one, at one time or another. So gentle parenting, this is my, um, my scope of practice. Um, <laughs> I have... I, I, this is actually, I actually was on and had a conversation with somebody else about, uh, gentle parenting. Um, mm -hmm. and this was at the height of me being a gentle parent. So I had Kaylee when I was 28 years old and I had her 
a couple months before COVID started doing his thing. So by the time Kaylee was five months, we were locked in the house. Everybody was an expert on everything on TikTok. Right. Everybody was trying right. to be healthy, eat herbs, use, use essential oils, okay. be patient, be kind. Everybody was going to therapy. We were healing our inner child. Like the we world was reset or something. Like, our parents. like all of that happened as I became yeah. a parent. Yeah. So for me, I got it a little different. So I had all these tools and things like that. And I followed a girl, I follow a young lady on TikTok who takes her time, you know, with her child and all of that. And I love the, her relationship with her daughter. And so I took a lot of that stuff and I implemented it. Um, I don't, I, I considered myself a gentle parent and then Brent Matthew Lewis Jr. was born. Um, <laughs> and so I, I he, um, he, he challenged me. He's a no limit soldier. Okay. Um, he's <laughs> definitely not a gentle kid. Um, he knocks my head sideways on a daily basis, not physically, but emotionally, spiritually, and all the other things. Um, and so I had to pivot the way that I parent. And for Kaylee, when Kaylee was really small, I used to look at her and see a lot of people, they believe that gentle parenting is kind of just going with the flow. Gentle parenting is, a lot of it is child-led, all of the things like that. The consequences need to match what they done, all the things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, but a lot of people think that it comes with a lot of fluff and a lot of soft. Um, if you ask any real gentle parent out here, play with me. Mess around and find out. I may not, I may keep my hands to myself, but you won't play with me again. Yeah. And so the conversations that me and Kaylee used to have when she was very small, Kaylee used to throw fits and I used to look at her and I'd be like, listen, baby girl, your only option is to do what you've been told to do. You don't run nothing around here. Until yeah. you grow, I grew them eyes. I grew that nose. I grew both of them arms. The feet you stumping with, I grew those things. You're not going to play with me, okay? And so for Kaylee, it was easy because I could, I could look at her and be like, these are your only options. So if she wanted something and she was screaming, your only options are to stop screaming Right. Do what I'm asking you to do. And then maybe we can reconsider what it is that you want. Or if she had a consequence, okay, you have an attitude, you're throwing a tablet. So guess what? You don't get to play with the tablet that you did not pay for. So you will not break. We'll see the tablet. Right. And then I sit it on the fireplace every morning. Good morning, tablet. You're not getting it. Don't even speak to it because you're not getting it. Okay. And so um, that was for her. BJ, I can look at BJ and I'll be like, your only option. And before I get my words in my mouth, people like, no, say option to me. And I'm like, oh, okay. So you're talking back. So I got to show you something a little different. So right. he has a nice red blues clues chair in his room. And this is this is my thing with the, with with BJ. You do not get to talk to me crazy. You do not get to do what you want. So I don't want you in my space. So the only space that you get to dwell in is in your own. And when you go in your room, please don't touch any of the things that I have bought because you're undoing in my space. You get to sit in that chair. That's, That's good. How you get to do it. You yeah. how you get to do it. And and there have been a few swats, a few pops with BJ's. If it comes to you touching a plug, running down the street, I'm gonna cause you a little bit of pain so you can remember to never do that again. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so <laughs> I have stepped out of a space of just gentle parenting and just being cautious about what about what I'm doing. My biggest thing is to never do anything to them that they will have to heal from. I don't want to be the reason they in therapy. Yeah. I don't want to be the reason that they have to heal their inner child. I don't want to be the reason. That they're 28, 29 years old looking in the mirror. You are strong. You are kind. You are worthy. You deserve. Uh -uh, I ain't doing none of that because I'm going to speak life into you, but I'm also going to correct you. So that when correct. you go into these schools, you're not the kid that the teacher, you know, maybe having a bad day and has to body slam. You would yeah. never be put in a position to do that because I'm teaching you now. And so I was, I'm telling you, I was a strong advocate for gentle parenting and what they look like. And I still am. I believe that everybody should. I think that what we're running into now is there are a lot of people who gentle parent, a lot of people who are cautious, cautious parenting, and then there's people who don't do any of those things. They are no limit soldiers. Their kids are no limit soldiers. They nucking and bucking. They'll elbow you in the eye and they're not going to play with you. And I feel that what we all should do as parents is mind our own business. As long as these people ain't skull dragging these kids, beating them up, cussing them out, throwing them out the house, doing all those things. As long as that parent is providing a safe atmosphere for a person to grow, because like I said, they don't belong to us anyway. Right. We don't know why that child is a no limit soldier and the mama got to whoop your butt every blue moon. That ain't my business. You yeah. ain't back in black and blue. I, I'm a firm believer that it's our responsibility to protect all people young. But if, if I mean, you know, hey, parents should parent how they want to. And I think what we're running into is that parents are feeling like they have to do something different because people are saying, if you don't do this, like people, people have said to me, Putting kids in timeout is a form of imprisonment. Well, th there you don't call them Brent no more. His, his name is number five seven two eight six. 
He's an inmate at my house. Call him what you want. He's going to go to time out. Okay. You know, and so and that's just what it boils down to. So what I'm learning is that I have to do the things to parent the way they need. Um, and then also pausing. If what you are doing is making me so upset that I want to whoop you, guess what? I'm not going to because I'm not going to take my anger out on you. Mm -hmm. There was a time I can't. Oh, Kaylee. Kaylee took her seatbelt off in the car. And I've told Kaylee time and time again, do not take your seatbelt off in this car. You stay in your seat. Five port harness, completely connected. Kaylee took her seatbelt off. She was in the back kicking it. And I said, are you having a grand old time? I said, get back in your seat. She got in her seat, screamed a little bit, halfway buckled it. I said, okay. We got home and she thought it was good. Mom, we about to watch Bluey. No, you're getting a spanking. You're spanking me? I am. <laughs> because had somebody hit our car, you could have flew through the windshield and we would be planning your funeral. Right. So I bet you'll never take that seatbelt off again. But that right. came from me all this to parent, parent where it matters. You know, parent, parent how it matters and do what's best for my kids. Kaylee, she may, we may get to a parking spot and she takes her seatbelt off as soon as we park. But I can guarantee you, if we go in 71 South, she ain't taking no seatbelt off. Never right. in her life. Right. And that's just what it boils down to. And so I would encourage all parents when it comes to gentle parenting to do what works for you. But mm -hmm. pause to make sure you are not the reason that your kid has to heal from trauma and that your your discipline does not come from um, you just being angry because gentle parenting is not without discipline. I honestly believe that's a gentle parent. Your discipline, your thinking on discipline has to go to a whole nother level because I can't just whoop you because mm -hmm. I can't just fuss at you because I have to sit down, come up with something that works for you so that you don't do these things again. Parents who whoop their kids for the same thing all the time, we probably need to figure out a new game plan. Right. I can guarantee you one thing. Kaylee touched a plug one time her entire life. Kaylee does not touch plugs. Why? Because I handled it. I nipped it in the bud. She received the discipline for it that one time. BJ's discipline was different, but do BJ does not touch plugs. Why? It took me one time to do what worked for him, recognize who my child is, recognize that we're talking about the same kids that would jump from the top of the stairs down on hardwood floor. He don't care about nothing, you know? And so I and so I, I assessed the situation on how I parent each kid differently. Brayden is seven months old, and guess what Brayden does? He throws spits. He falls out. So we don't know what life is going to look like, but I, I, but like I did a good tip on that one. As soon as he throw a fit, let us be in public. I'm going to lay right next to him and throw the same fit. I will take my wig off and embarrass you. <laughs> Bet you won't do it no more. But I think we all just have to pause to just do the things that cause the, our kids to stop doing the things that are unnecessary. Yeah. What type of discipline causes you to stop doing the things that are unnecessary? The older they get, they may be harder because we all make bad decisions. If I had a bruise for every time I bump my head on the same rock, baby, my head would be busted wide open. Period. But while you're small, and I'm protecting you for you, gentle parenting and cautious parenting, I'm an advocate for it. I'm telling you, it works. It's not without discipline. It's not soft parenting. It's not kids running over you. It's not your kids. Some people think gentle parents going to be slapped upside the head. It ain't none of that. <laughs> it's taking a time out to pause to parent that person. Because they won't always be a kid. Parent the person. Yep. So, I'm listen. I can go on about just parenting, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be with me, okay. <laughs> I love that. Um, I'm also a firm believer in parents how you need to, but uh, make sure that it is not a uh internal internal damage that will carry them into adulthood because that's something they're gonna have to sit on somebody's couch and work out. For real. Okay. So my next one's it. My next one is influence. Now, I often hear a lot of parents say that they feel like their influence is null and void because of the bigger or greater influence that's out in the world. Um, I know that there are a lot of temptation. There's a lot of influence. There's a lot of peer pressure. There's a lot of, um, you know, kids that want to fit in. There's a lot of kids that want to do what looks good, what looks popular. Um, TikTok. There's so many things that be on TikTok that these kids be trying and be putting their life in danger. You know what I mean? And same thing with being out in the world. There's a lot of things that are tempting to our young folk or tempting to our children or our kids. And sometimes it feels like the influence is just bigger than what we have to say or what we have to do. What do you guys think about that? Do you feel like the influence is something? I obviously agree that the influence starts at home. You ought, you ought to be your first kid's example you know, on what to do, what not to do, what influences there are out there and, you know, all of that good stuff. But what is your take on influence when it comes to your children or your kids, especially when they get around other kids? 
the older okay so i i guess i gotta split up my response <laughs> but it works for the same thing so i don't know okay so i'll say bullet point one is music 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 is a but it's always it it is always has been and i remember my aunt said to me i was probably like in my 20s and this was aunt terry and she said the next time you go out because i know i know you you know y'all go out y'all go to the club y'all have fun and i was like yeah aunt terry but you know i'm not like doing wild stuff i'm Really, I'm gonna tell y'all to be honest. The only reason why I like to go out was to dress up. So, <laughs> like after I entered the room, I was like, "Okay, we can go home now. Like my my time is over." Like <laughs> I'm like, hey, "Yeah, this is fun." But she said, "I want you the next time you go out. I don't care where it is." She said, "I don't care if it's a bar, ladies' night, whatever." She said, "Don't drink anything." I said, "Okay, easy for me." Cause I'm not a drinker like that. And she said, and I want you to watch the room. And I said, okay. She said, you know, just observe and watch the influence that music mixed with alcohol or spirits bring. And I said, Aunt Terry, where are you going with this? And so as we were conversing, she said, well, who was Lucifer? Now we're going back to scripture. And I was like, okay. So she was breaking down some stuff for me. She was like the minister of music before he, you know, was descended, mm -hmm. right? And she said, that is his main gain to like control. And if I gave you a gift and you're good at it, whatever you're doing, you'll be good at doing that. You could take that good, that gift for good or bad, right? So as I as I did what she said, I said, man, this is so true. And then I took it back. My grandfather was a jazz musician. He was signed to Columbia Records. And I remember him having a conversation with me and saying, the music industry is not what people think it is. Mm -hmm. because if you're going to get into it, Tim, she could be cautious, be cautious, be cautious. I never wanted any of my kids to get into it because they they take it, they twist it. it you know, it's been going on for eons, right? So to shorten this response, I feel like, and not all people in the industry, not all people behind, uh, you know, the, the radio, but I do feel like some of those people that run that stuff are allowing, have y'all noticed music got worse? Even, be, even, even as when we were kids, like things were more censored. Mm -hmm. Well, they know like, Hey, music can like change a generation. Right. So Instead of us having the boys on the corner singing four part harm four or five point harmony in love and saying how we want to take care of this woman, let's switch it and have them singing about sex, drugs, money. That's because we know the influence behind the four or five quartets in harmony was love and, and having families and kids and being there and just catering to a woman. Now we see we see the influence and in how we can change kids. So let's use it for bad. And mm. the more I look, because I'm a music kid, like I love anybody that knows me knows I love music. And so as I'm listening to this stuff, I can't even stomach it anymore. Yeah. And I'm watching and I work at the courthouse. So I see the other side of it too, where we got young men, especially our men that's coming in that's doing some of the same stuff that they're influenced by and is it all music fault no but it does play a heavy part in it and so I used to try as much as I could oh. to censor some of the stuff that the kids were listening to and as soon as my as soon as my son got older I noticed his music was different and I was like and then I seen that the attitude change. Mm -hmm. I've seen some of the stuff and I'm like, listen, you can't go off of what they are literally told to say these things on record to get your generation to do all these crazy things because it's a money game. Don't ever think that these people that are talking this stuff is always walking this stuff. Now, some of them do, unfortunately, because yeah. now, you know, now we're talking about the music industry, get them more more money dead than alive but there is a point when i i truly believe the influence is 
music. They got this thing out now that the girls are saying classy is boring. And I'm like, I just heard that last week. I said, who said that? There is uh, two uh, rappers, uh, girls, that are like advocating to say classy is boring. And I'm like, now, y'all going to put that into our kids, oh. our girls, ears, listening ears, so that they can become this ratchet because they think, okay, ratchet is fun. They're getting paid. They're on TV. They're getting money. But what are you bringing to yourself? You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's that demonic energy that we talk about all the time mm -hmm. that, that can truly change a kid's outlook. So besides the person that's sitting in the class next to them, that's going through, you don't know what these kids are going through. I remember RJ telling me, when kids are becoming bullies, sometimes it's because they're either bullied at home or they're hungry. They haven't ate all week. You know what I'm saying? You don't know like the story next to them. And it's not always our kids' jobs to find out what that is. But it's definitely a thing. So I, for me, the, the, the influence starts at home, but it doesn't end there. It's like, okay, what are they... Uh, they're being conditioned on these tablets. I've tried to, I've tried to block a lot of stuff out of Zaria's tablet, and it just it the stuff just keeps popping up and popping up and popping up. I seen a cartoon where the cartoon said, "I want to kill myself." I'm like, "What?" And this was on YouTube. Of oh, course, wow. everything is. Mm -hmm. So it's like they can't get away from media. But the world has conditioned it that way so that our kids can be controlled by them and not us and, and governed by God. I, I don't, but that's just, you know, that's just my take on it. Mm -hmm. Any one of you ladies have any input on what you think? I, I can go. Um, so with, with Brent being the youth pastor and so us being youth leaders, um, we see a lot of what the influence influence does, um, especially just doing the camp this summer. Um, our our youth were a lot more vulnerable, a lot more open. Um, we used a journaling method to really get in their minds and really see where they were, um, mm -hmm. the things that they wouldn't say out loud. And a lot of them are seeking answers that don't exist in the resources that they seek them from. And so, mm -hmm. um, it, it's my for for my kids, especially with Kennedy being thirteen, um. Kennedy says so she's not allowed to have a, a TikTok, but I realized that she was watching YouTube shorts. I'm like, that's a TikTok. Yeah. It's a TikTok. And so I'm just kind of monitoring, trying to monitor the things that she watches, but because she's 13, mm -hmm. you know, the whole, um, I noticed that when she first got her own phone and stuff, if I asked her to do something, she would lock it and flip it over. And then she'll go on and do what she's doing. And she would think I don't know the password, baby. I yeah. Was I pick it up and I look. Okay, okay. Oh, that's why. Uh huh. You were on YouTube watching YouTube shorts. Uh -huh, I see. Okay. Um, but it's but I seen something today. Um, they had there were two like demonic looking spawns, and they had a cage on their back, and the cage had kids in them. And the question was asked: What influences are you allowing to lock your kid's spirit up? Mm. So here, here's what I know. Um, like, for instance, Brent. Brent is a prime example of the things that of your family being the biggest influence. Brent was raised in the church. His parents did not allow a lot of secular music, all of the things. There, These new rappers, and I mean, when I, when I say new rappers, y'all, I mean, like, rappers that's, like, from early 2000s. Brent don't know who none of them people is. He be like, <laughs> who is that? I get to talking about something. I can say, did you see such and such on the shade room? And he be like, who even is that? But that's <laughs> but I was raised different. My mom got into church for real, for real. I think we've been at Memorial going on 20 years, but I'm 30. I don't know how old I am. 32. I'm 32. So by the time I was 12, from zero to 12, BET, people used to be like, yo mama kids know all the songs. We used to make up dance routines and everything. And then when social media came about, I'm already 13, 14 years old, didn't been exposed to all types of music. My mama was going to church. I wasn't. My mama was still pivoting in her relationship with Christ. So it wasn't a, if I go, y'all gonna go. It was a, if y'all, if, if y'all ain't dressed when I get up, I'm gonna leave y'all type deal. And so I had a lot of influences. So me, it's a lot different. 
But it is my prayer that the example that I lead in my home is what my children take with them. I pray that the taste of this world is not good in my kids' mouth. Woo. That the music of this world, it means nothing to their ears. That the things that they see on TV, the, the class he is born, I pray that they are bored forever. Okay. Because I don't, because what, what I don't, what I don't have time for, me and Brent were just talking. We were talking about how, let's say for instance, I use a drug dealer for instance, because for whatever reason, they always seem to have everything, right? And so they have the houses, the cars, the furs, the this, the that, the women, the this, the that, and they still empty. They still seeking and yearning for something. So it's my prayer that we are giving my kids, our kids the right influence in this home so that they walk in purpose and purpose alone. I want Kaylee to be so conditioned that when people ask her what she wants to be, that she opens up her mouth. What do you want to be in the will of God? What does that look like? I just want to be in the will of God, whatever that looks like for my life, whatever. And, and so, and I am a, and, and being in the, I think I've been in the youth ministry going on 10 years. I've been in the youth ministry long enough to understand this one thing. The world can throw what they want to throw at these kids, but the God that I serve, he ain't feel me yet. And he ain't going to start because somebody on the, on the radio talking about some, some class he is born or somebody is at the school saying something that's inappropriate or whatever the case may be. I'm building the character of kingdom citizens. Yeah. And so I, and so I know things will come up, come up. I know curiosity will strike up, but I pray that when they go to listen to the music, they ain't got no business listening to that. It leaves a nasty taste in their mouth. I pray that when they look up on the things that they're not supposed to be looking at, that it, it brings them no entertainment. It brings them no joy. I pray oh that the, their character as a kingdom citizen overrides the influence of the enemy any given day. Yeah. And I, and 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 like Apostle says all the time, the word when the word says train up a child, they train up a child, that means bend the child in the way they should go. And so if they do depart from it somewhere down the line, guess what? I raise a kingdom citizen. So if they ever start acting like a world peasant, they'll get back to their kingdom citizenhood. That's just what it boils down to. And so yeah. there are a lot of influences. Media has a lot of influences over our children. Um, but I think it's like you said, it starts at home. It starts at home. It starts with the seeds that you sow at home. It starts with the things. Music can't never. Music would never be able to define to my daughter who she is because Kaylee Christine knows who she is. She mm -hmm. knows the beauties that she's possessed. She knows the the all the things that she possessed because it starts at home. So when she does see little somebody down the street twerking or something, whatever the case may be, half naked because of something they seen on TikTok, she gonna keep her clothes under her butt where it's supposed to be. And so nice. I, and I I told Brent I said one of the things that concerns me. Is that when we were growing up, um, women were women, women were classy, men were men, men held a standard. We got to see those things. Um, we got to see it in the way that people carried themselves on on TV, in the way that you know the TV shows were about college and yeah. families and all of that. And those are not the things now, right? And so our kids really don't have a lot of the good influences, and it's sad. It's sad every time I get on social media and I see a woman with no clothes on, it breaks my heart. And yeah. I always think my grandma would have never. The women of her time, our mama's time, they would have never, never. And so what can I do about that? I can show up and be a good example for what a woman looks like for my daughter because I'm her first mentor. I'm right. her first mirror of what a woman looks like. My husband is the first mirror for our son of what of what a man looks like. So I, I, I believe that, that what's going on with the influences that media is pushing out with social media and all that, it's going to get worse. It's going to get a, 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 a ton. They're going to have access to way more stuff because like Thomas Sheikah said, that is the, that's the plan of the enemy is to destroy a generation. Yeah. But I, I heard Apostle say, when you're in a rock and a hard place, make sure that Jesus is the rock. So even being in a rock and a hard place, we're going for Jesus. We're going for broke. I'm going to give them to God. And I, I'm raising kingdom citizens. The ones that will tell their friends, you did wrong for that. And you know you're wrong. Yeah. Sis, you're not going nowhere with me with that. I'm going to put some real clothes on because we classy over here no matter if it's born. Period. Hello. And so I, I'm just, I, I, um, I am, like I said, I'm raising kingdom citizens and I believe that God is going to continue to give me the things that overpower any influence that this world would ever try to bring towards them. And even Absolutely. if they do stray, if they even, even if they do stray, they will return back to where they're supposed to be. So yeah. That's my take on it. That's good stuff. Amy. You got any take on influence? I do. Um, but to shorten time with the two older ones that I have, all I ever did was just watch and pray. That's that's pretty much all I can do. 
Um, I see it a lot now. And oh, I'm listening to y'all and I watch the girls that are on the squad and I see the influence. I see, and it's so much, and I'm not gonna pinpoint one thing because I don't wanna, I don't wanna, you know, open the floodgates, yes, but right. um, I see it all and it is 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 heartbreaking. Um, one thing I'm grateful for though is that I I had two kids that were always very mindful of who they were and they always wanted to be original them. So they didn't want to follow after anybody else. And honestly, Zarya gets extremely mad when anybody tries to <laughs> follow after her. She does not like that. It bugs her when somebody, when she sets her own dream for her own self and then you trying to do the same thing she's doing. No, no, thank you. Like she does yeah. not <laughs> like that. She hates it. And so I love that because that's something that, um, again, a thing. I, I'm like, where did she get this stuff from? But I'm obviously it came from me or her daddy or both in some kind of way, shape, form, or fashion. And I love that because I love seeing her want to be 100% her and whatever yeah. it is that she's doing. And I just want her to show up as her all the time, as and Zion as well. So. I just pray about it because um, it's, it's out there and there is hardly anything that we going to do about it other than going to God and, and praying for it goes back to protection. Influence really has a lot to do with why we protect and do the things that we do every day. So, yeah, it's amazing to me how from when your child was small until they're the age that they are now, how much prayer you really do. <laughs> And I'm not saying, you know, the prayer where you say, you know, God cover them, but you really be on your face because there are so many, the enemy has so many tactics and so many attacks when it comes. And I don't know what it is about kids, what it is about children, what it is about babies. And I don't know if it's because of the innocence that they possess or if it, if the world or a taste of the world is new to them to where they seem like easy targets. Um, my biggest, and I'm going to say anxiety because it's giving me that. Uh, my biggest concern or my biggest worry when it comes to Khalil is when he gets that age is that he is not easily influenced by the people he's around, by the people he connects with, by the people he comes in contact with. And I am so, I don't want to say afraid because I know what God I serve, but I am so concerned about what the world is going to look like when he gets to high school, when he gets to college, you know what I mean? Because if it is the way that it is now, it's only going to get worse the older that they get. You know what I mean? And so I asked my aunt because uh, she has one child and her kid is in high school getting ready to graduate. And I asked her, I said, Auntie, your son is just so awesome. You know, he's in, he's, uh, he has a job. He got a girlfriend. He has a job. He's, you know, on the, um, on the principal's honorary. Like he's just a phenomenal kid. Like just amazing. Has been since he was a kid. And just grew up into this amazing young man. And I asked her, I said, so what's 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 the tea? What's what's what is the trick? Okay, what's the tips? What you doing at home? And she said, I'm gonna just keep it a buck with you. I'm gonna just be honest. I pray. And I said, That's it? And she said, Yeah. And she said, I let God do the rest. She said, because from when he was younger until he is the age that he's he is now. I did what God told me to do when it came to instilling everything that needed to be instilled in him. And so the kid that you see right now is just evident of what God can do when all you do is just pray. I said, sis, I mean, I see. really? She said, yes. And she said, that's all you got to do is just pray. And when you do pray, you be specific in your prayers when it comes to who your kids uh, are, you know, gravitate to, who they call friends, even when it comes to family. You know, you be very specific in your prayer. And she said, and just watch God do the rest. And she said, yes, I am very, you know, uh, I'm a witness to as your kid gets older, there are different stages that you're going to hit from when they're a child until they are the age that they are now. And with them different stages, it will cause your prayer to be different. And no matter how old they get, that is a constant thing that you're going to be doing as long as they're on this earth is praying. And just give them to God, leave them in God's hands. And I was like, man, that's some... It, it sounds like it's cliche and it sounds like it's something that's not really a big deal, but prayer is something that's never going to fail. It's always going to be something that's going to work. And if it don't, and if you are not a believer in prayer works, just look at your life. 
Just look at Dang. your kids' life. You know what I mean? Just look at the evidence around you that prayer is something that works and it's never going to fail. God is never going to fail. And so being a parent, I am honored that God chose me to be the mother, that God chose my husband to be the father of the, of the child we call Khalil because he is truly a blessing. And although we are still navigating through parenthood, although we are still navigating through uh, the different advice and opinions we get from other people, God has always been our source. And God has always been someone that we kept in the middle of our parenting, no matter what the decision is. And right now we're in the process of making decisions on how his progress and furthering his progress should go. And God has not failed us yet. God has opened up some doors that I never thought would be opened because of my son's progress. So we are forever grateful for uh, not only God, but our support system. For those of you who know his story that has prayed, that has uh, interceded on his behalf, you know, we are forever grateful for that. For you all who I see the fruits in your children. Anytime that I could see a four-year-old or a seven-month-year-old, he ain't throwing no fit, he's shouting. Because that's what we say Khalil is doing. Khalil just shouting. He just getting his praise on. That's all. He ain't doing no fit. He's shouting. He giving God the glory. That's all. But anytime you can see a four-year-old or a seven-month or, you know, three or four-year-olds giving God praise or giving God glory, that's a testament of what is instilled in them from the parent. And so I've always been told from my mom and dad, no matter how old you get, you are always a representation of us. So what you do, what you say, how you act, it's a representation of not only us, but it's a representation of God. And God loaned you to us. So whatever we instilled in you and you go out and you misdo it or mistreat it, it's a reflection on us. Don't have us out here looking like you ain't teach you right. Okay, don't do that. So with that being said, time has been far well spent. But before I close this out, I want us to leave some last parting words from mother to mother. Any any encouragement or advice you can give a mom who might be struggling, who is in the midst of giving up, who doesn't have any help, but is out here doing it on her own, who is trying to strive to be the best mother she can be for the children that she does have. Is there any advice that you can give them just to keep going on the strength of motherhood? Because it's the best hood to be in. Period. Since you want to go first? Sure. And that's on the um, hood, okay? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Period. On the hood. <laughs> um, I would just give the advice of remember as a woman remember who you are who you are because you can't take care of your little ones or your big ones if you're not taking care of yourself yeah that self that self time that self reflection that self like prayer um however is spent is needed yes uh preferably prayer before you do anything else um, because that guides you. And I did not recognize this. I'm going to be honest, y'all. I did not recognize this until I had Zari. There is a difference in your maturity level when you have a child. And I thought I was, listen, I thought I was like super mature. Because I was raised with older people, I and, and, and my grandmother was the biggest influence, I truly thought, okay, I got this in the bag. Like I'm 18. I'm in college. I got a job, a car. Yes, I have a kid. Monique forced me to grow up more so than um than I probably would have at that time. It took my selfishness away, right? Um, and Kei made it permanent. But the difference between having children at a younger age versus having children at now I know the importance of having not just a two-parent household, but a God-filled household. That makes such a huge difference. Um, so before your if your household is not that way, it does not mean that God is shunning you as a single mom, that he has given up on you as a single mom, or you're condemned just keep going yeah. but don't leave God out you're going to need him to be that parent 
when you can't be that parent mm -hmm. um and then wait on them it sounds so cliche but if i had to just listen it's, it would have once I started listening, it made my trial easier because I had someone to hold my hand. Yeah. I see the mistakes that I made, but I'm not condemned by them because I am with God. The The mistakes that I've made, it's just a teacher to like, not only not to do it again with Zaria, but just to say, okay, step back and talk, be transparent and talk to somebody else, right? And so um, remember that. And then when the kids are going through whatever it is that they're going through, because they're not going to tell you everything. They're just not. They're not going to tell you everything. Um, just make sure, like Shauna said, that you're open to listen and then go pray about it. Be like, Lord, have mercy. My kids are crazy. You got to take it. Take the car. The, forget taking the wheel. Take the car. Just repo the car because they tripping. They have no idea. But just be a listening ear. And um, it's okay to be a disciplinary, but just be a listening ear. Keep God with you. You're going to need him for it all. Whether they're two or 22, you, you'll need it. Because then they'll turn around and say, okay, I see every time mom has a situation, she's praying. Mm -hmm. I see every time mom is hurting she's calling out on jesus yeah so i have to do the same thing because i see in that instance the next time i see her she's smiling she's happy my grandmother lost two boys to violence and i don't know if y'all know that like my father was murdered and then not even 10 years later she lost her her and my grandfather lost their oldest son to murder and it was nothing that they did in like literally my uncle was at the wrong place wrong time my dad was breaking up a domestic violence dispute that's just to make the oh. long story short so it wasn't like they were like horrible people or anything but you guys knew my grandmother and you knew with her with her losing two sons like that not even within a 10 year time span i used to ask her how did you do it and the, the most simple answer was Jesus. Like for her to, uh, you know, you see so many people, mothers breaking down and not knowing how they're going to go on the next day. I literally was raised with a woman who, who smiled and helped other people through their own adversity after losing two kids to murder. And that was because of her faith. Like literally it was because of her faith. So keep it. It it will not be easy. It will every day is not gonna be roses. Um, take that time out for married couples. Oh my god, I'm gonna make this point and I'm gonna I'm gonna end it. Listen, it is so different. I had no idea this is my first time with uh in a two-parent household with my kids, like really active in a two-parent household with my kids. Both of y'all gonna need to go to the prayer closet. People are <laughs> raised different. They're raised different. Yeah. My dad was married to my mother, but he didn't get that opportunity. His life was cut so short. So I did not see my mother and my dad interacting with each other as a married couple to say, how are we gonna deal with Tamashik's attitude today? Because you're 50, she's 50% 50 of me, 50% of you, and, and DNA don't lie. She off the chain. So how are we gonna deal with her today? <laughs> And I noticed the kids are master manipulators. Oh my God. They will literally have you arguing with your spouse. And I had, I had no idea. So just keep God first in everything that you do. Know that it gets greater later. Yeah. And being a mom is awesome. And we get the best gifts for a reason on Mother's Day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Two of them. <laughs> Since you want to go next. All right. So I would just add, um, most definitely keeping God first needs to be the first foremost. Nothing. All things will perish if you don't. Um, <laughs> secondly, I would say definitely focusing on yourself, focusing on your health. Go to therapy. Go, don't skip, don't skip therapy. Don't skip doctor's appointments. Don't skip the gym. Don't skip 
the nail appointments, even if the nail appointment is you in your own house, don't skip. We have been conditioned to believe this toxic mentality that if we sacrifice certain things like going to the gym, getting our nails done, getting our hair done, buying us a new shirt for our right. kids that we're doing something noble, that's toxic. Don't do that. Because before you were a mother, before you were a wife, you were a person first. And so if you are not taking care of you, then how can you ever, how can you truly say you care and you love somebody else and you're taking the best care of them if you're not taking care of the person you go to sleep and wake up with every single day? The person that you spend every single second with. I had that toxic mentality. That is time out. I take days off of work and I look at my husband. I'm like, I'll see y'all. There's milk in the freezer because right. I have to go remember who Shalante is. Yeah. I lost that for so long. I was a stay at home mom and I thought I was doing something noble when I went to Target and bought my kids a pair of sandals that they didn't need and my shirt had a hole in it. Or that I was doing something noble when I went and spent my money on, well, I know that I need to get my hair done and all I got to do is buy this hair stuff from the store, but we're going to go get Baskin Robbins instead so that y'all can be happy. It's ice cream at the house. Um, so I would I would encourage, especially single moms, don't forget yourself. Utilize your village. And sometimes we think like, because it's not an auntie or uncle or a grandma or grandpa that we don't have a village. Your village may be sister girl from your job that got kids your age who you sit and eat lunch with every day. Yeah. It may be her, it may be you saying, listen, I need to go get a pedicure. It's gonna take me about an hour. There's a park by where I'm going. If I buy the ice cream, can you watch the kids and then I'll watch the kids while you go in? Utilize the people around you. Tap into the people who you trust to to delegate to hey yep. you know maybe that auntie that always say if you not, let me know if you need something but you think because she's 70 some years old she can't watch your kids and she didn't watch kids raise kids and all that and she know how to take care of a kid i used to my mom used to be like well let me i'll get bj and kelly i'm like my mom know if you can catch my girl i got five kids that are all still alive <laughs> but before, they gotta be in the car seat and then bj run your brother used to run i got this now i'll be like mama do you want all the kids <laughs> who you want? You need the stroller? <laughs> because what? So I say just take that time out to remember who you are. We, as mothers, we always pour from empty cups. And I'm going to be quite honest with you. While our kids may give us the best hugs and they may tell us they love us, they don't want that dust at the bottom of that cup. Mm -mm. They want the nourishment. They want the vitamins. They want the nutrients that was in the cup that, that you know, they want that. They don't want what's, what's left of us after we've worked and worked our business in. Uh, they don't want that. They want the best part. I want my kids to, so when they're older, if somebody asks them, what's one thing you remember, remember about your mama? She was healthy. She was whole and she loved herself. Yeah. And so I encourage all mothers to do that. And then the last thing that I'm going to say is to remember that in this journey, you're raising somebody's purpose. You're raising somebody's blessing. You're raising somebody's husband. You're raising somebody's wife. You're raising somebody's blueprint that was wrote at the beginning of the time has your child in it. And so you do have to pray and see God for how to raise that person so that when they come across the people that they are meant to bless or that they are meant to be uh, connected to or the people that they are meant to grow with, the, the student that whose life they, may, life they may be meant to save, that you have put the things of God in them so that it comes out when it's necessary. Don't wait until they 15, 16, 17 and start talking to them about the things of God to start pointing into them the things that you know you heard God say. God said my baby was a dreamer. He told me every day, wake up and ask her, what does she dream about? I do that. She's four years old. She gets up on her own and say, mommy, my dreams were turned on last night. And I say, what did you see in your dream? And she said, some of some stuff, I'd be looking at her like, God, what does that mean? Why was there a snail on an ice cream cone? It was bigger than ice cream, do you know? Um, but I but I do the things, like um, like Shay said, that her auntie told her, I, I'm, I'm doing what God to tells me to do with them because I know that I'm raising somebody's purpose. That's everybody's it. Here, no matter how they get here, everybody's placed here for a reason. And so we can either, as parents, pour into them the things that they need to walk in a purpose, or our kids will be the same people that we're looking at with pity down the line. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to be in that space. So I say, remember that. Out of all, put God first. It, it need to be God and you right there. Like immediate second. Right up under that mug. I say, I say all the time, it's God first, me. And then my, my husband and my kids, everything else is secondary. So I bunch us all together. I bunch us all together and then everything else is secondary. The, put, give, all, give all things to God. Take care of yourself. And remember, you got somebody's purpose in your hand. So that's, that's my advice. That's good stuff. 80? So I think, first of all, I love what everybody says. So I want to say that. Um, 
I think what I want to leave today is I remember um, trying to think through how I was going to parent after the divorce. Mm -hmm. And um, having my encouragement today goes to those ladies who are divorced um, or those ladies who are co-parenting with a, a man um, or a, another person who, you know, you guys either were in a relationship or you were divorced or whatever the case may be. Listen, uh, my first thing I want to say is that child is not a pawn. You need to make sure that if you are going to co-parent, that means that you guys are going to get together and you are going to figure out the best plan that is in action for that child. It is not about you. Yeah. It is not about him. It is about that baby. That's it. That child, that young adult, whatever it is. Um, I am saying this because I remember where I was and where I am now. Mm -hmm. And where I was, <laughs> I was angry when I started. Um, and I remember Zion's graduation life not being the best, but we got through it. Um, it was a rough time in his life and mine. We were just freshly divorcing. And I look at the time frame now and I'm looking at how Z Zaria went through a lot in these last couple of years. And we are in a better place. Um, my ex-husband is remarried now. So she has a bonus mom as well. Um, I don't know. I have a working relationship with her, but Zaria has a functioning relationship with her. And I respect that. And I've always told both of them, please respect her. Yeah. Please make sure that you are, you know, giving her the respect that she needs, because obviously that's somebody that your father loves. So that means that you need to welcome her in your heart now. So that's one. Two, um, you guys need to work on that, whatever that is whether it be I'm going to pick this child up on this day or I'm going to do that, make sure that you put the parameters into play because who suffers through that is not you and it's not him, it's the child. So that's my advice. Um, I can say a lot to that, but as I don't really, I feel like I'm a single mom, but honestly, I'm not a single mom all the way because I've had the experience of being married. I've had the experience of being separated and I've had the experience of being divorced and all those things rolled up into one. Um, when you take it back, at least I am blessed to say that I still had an active father in their life. Yeah, My yeah. children had an active father. They know us married. They know us not together, but they know us. And I'm blessed to be able to say that maybe my my divorce was something crazy, but what I am blessed to say is that out of that, they were still able to thrive and they were still able to have both of us and probably better versions of us now because we understood that we did not need to be together. So yeah. I encourage those parents that are co-parenting, co-parent, but do not take co-parenting as a pawn. It is not a pawn. It is not weapons. That baby is not something that you can use as a as a vice to get what you want and a manipulative tool. It is your child and it is y'all's child together and respect each other enough so that y'all can raise that baby the right way. Absolutely. Well, my advice would be for first time moms, if you all have not noticed, I've noticed a lot more women starting to get or starting to create families a little older uh, in their age uh, by choice. A lot of women are doing this by choice, uh, starting to get more into their career, starting to do more traveling, starting to spend more time with family and friends. You know, they're doing what they want to do and putting themselves first before creating a family. Because I believe that they know that once this child come into play, a lot of things are not stopped, but either put on hold or they slow down once the child comes into place. So my advice would be for a first time mom, uh, enjoy the experience enjoy the experience uh, enjoy the relationship that you get to develop with your child um, enjoy all the pain enjoy the uh, uncomfortability enjoy uh, the picture taking enjoy the decorating enjoy the nurturing enjoy all of the little things that lead you up 
to being able to hold your child for the first time. Um, enjoy all the things that prepare you for motherhood. Um, take advantage of um, all the opportunities that are, that are allowed it to you, whether that be birthing classes, whether that be a doula, sis, hit her up, doula, she provides them services, uh, whether it be a doula, um, whether it be you know a breastfeeding class, whatever that is, enjoy it. In, enjoy the planning um, and make sure that your needs are put first when it comes to preparing your birthing plan. Make sure however you want that to look like, however you want that to be, that that's put in the forefront when you get ready to bring this child into the world. And when the child does come into the world, um, share every moment that you can. Take all the pictures, take all the videos. Listen, I got a whole separate, okay, hear me, a whole separate uh, memory card with nothing but Khalil. Videos, pictures, like all of that stuff. Um, I am enjoying being a mom. I'm enjoying motherhood and I am embracing every chance that I get to hold them, to get to laugh with them, to get to take a picture with them, all of that type of stuff. So I encourage you moms, keep doing it. Keep God first, like all the other ladies said, because I promise you, he will be the one to see you through. Always pray. Um, if you're unsure, if you don't know, um, if you don't trust nobody else's word, definitely pray. That that would be number two. And number three, you got this because you were destined and born to do this. So this is you. And don't be afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to get help. None of that type of stuff because we are, we're superheroes and uh, we birth, we can, you know, do all the other things that moms do, but we are not superheroes. So where we don't need a rest, where we don't need to take a, a step back, where we don't need to, you know, uh, let our minds reset. So if there is a point in time where you are just exhausted and just tired and you need a break, get that, sis. Get that. Lean on your support system. Those who you trust, lean on them for sure. And I promise you, after you do all of what you need to do for yourself, you will be an even better mother than you thought you were before. Listen, ladies, time has been far well spent. I told Auntie Shonda when we first started <laughs> that this might be a while. One, because it's four of us. Two, because we're women. And when we get to talking, we don't lose track of time. <laughs> we had some malfunctions in the beginning, but I thank you all for rocking with me. I apologize for um, the audio. We were having some difficulties getting the sound and stuff like that together. This is my first time actually doing a four um, square panel. So I thank the ladies for uh, going on this journey with me. It was a success, although we had some mild audio issues, but it turned out phenomenal. You ladies gave some great advice. Um, I'm leaving with a little bit more understanding of what it is to be a mother from you all's ladies' advice. Um, I'm, I'm rocking with the motherhood. Now, once I, like I said before, I don't know how many it's going to be, but I'm cool with the one for now, okay? Cool with the one. Cool with the one. <laughs> cool with the one for now. Is there any parting words that you ladies have to say before we end the show? I, I just want to say real quick, Shay, thank you for um, having us on here. Absolutely. I, just, just watching the podcast grow has been phenomenal. Um, but I will say this, watching you walk in motherhood is a testament to the goodness of God. Yes. And so I just thank you for sharing, for being open, for being transparent and for allowing us into this space for you that used to just be a prayer. So yes. I, I love you and I thank you for having us on. I'm going to go cry my tears now because you <laughs> have, you are Mother Shay is blessing my soul. Okay. I, thank and I just you. I really thank God for allowing us just to have insight on what his hand looks like when he works the thing out. So yes. God bless you, sis. Absolutely. Thank you, sis. Love you too. Real quick, same <laughs> love seeing you be on Lord have mercy. I've known Shay. Uh uh, don't do Shay it. Shay has been da da da. So Seeing that, I yeah. ain't saying all of it, but right. seeing that, um, that's it's like a complete blessing. But um, shameless plug, first of all, thank you for loving me and always keeping me um, connected. Yes, number absolutely. One. Um, two, um, I want to say thank you guys for just giving all your words of wisdom and all of the things that I've learned. I know one day I'm going to be a grandma, so a lot of that, yeah. I ain't personally though. Yeah, but, that I, point. I it though. <laughs> but uh, 
but learning what you guys deal with on an everyday basis at this point in juncture in your lives with the smaller kids is definitely enlightening. So, and you never know who knows if I'm going to be somebody's woman that has a smaller child. You don't yeah, know. So yeah. I need to know what I'm getting into in case. Right. So I want to say thank right. you guys. Um, inspiration platform. Thank you so much. And yes. I'm just grateful um, to be a part Absolutely. Thank you so much. This same, y'all know I'm kind of low key shy for real, for real. <laughs> what? So you? I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> I'm going to keep it. Look here. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. <laughs> no, I, I, I do appreciate being on the show with you guys, getting different outlooks. So if some, uh, if some of y'all stories kind of took me back down memory lane i was like oh man if the kids could go back and be little just one more time i know that time goes fast and that's something I'm that i took that. for granted um you know when i had the older two i just i, I went from saying man i wish i wonder what they're gonna sound like when they talk and why can't they just be in <laughs> high school already right. to like saying Dang, I just want one more macaroni card. That's all I want. Like, oh, <laughs> but it was no, it was good. I'm uh, conversating with you guys. Say, yo, uh, lounge is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Look, we I got we got it. some of the same parallel stories, you know, with like, you know, I know that's your first. Yes. But this one feels like I'm stuck. Like, I ain't had, I had, I ain't even have kids. So she, she, you know, she gave me a run, but I love yeah. it. But no, I really um thank you guys. This this is this has been amazing. It's been fun. Yes, absolutely. Listen, thank you, ladies, once again for uh joining in this episode with me for the podcast. It was one that was very dear and true to my heart. So I appreciate you ladies for accepting the invitation to come on to the show. Um, like I tell you all the time, this will not be your first or last time. Uh, several of y'all, all, all y'all have been on here more than one time. Okay. Uh, this will not be the second or third time. Okay. <laughs> that you'll be on the show. Listen, if you are not, you need to be following the Queens Lounge on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram. I'm on every platform, streaming platform that you can think of where podcasts are listened to. Listen, if you are looking for doula services, sis right here in the corner, she gonna get you together. Sis, let the people know where they can find you and for your services. You can find me on Facebook at Shalante Lewis, or you can find me on Instagram at day Four doula services. I am trying out, I'm actually in the process of trying out a new method of the way doulas show up for you. And I'm offering some free doula services. Mm -hmm. So Inbox me the word doula on Instagram or Facebook and let's let's have a conversation. Let's see what I can do for you and your family. Listen, I know there's a pregnant woman out there somewhere looking for one. Okay. Hit this up. Amy, you want to let the people know where they can listen to your podcast? So um you can listen to Inspiration on YouTube. You can listen to it on pretty much everywhere that you can listen to our podcast. So Spotify, all the all the things. Um, I'm on Inspiration on IG and Facebook. So if you can't find the link, you'll find it on those. And or just message me and you can I'll send you the link. But yes, thank you so much. Absolutely. If you are going to be following AT down here, she has a full out exclusive on her journey of her weight loss. She looks amazing. And you will be able to see it in full detail when you go check out her show. Okay, so make sure y'all gonna do that. And then sis at the bottom, listen, when I tell you when it comes to decorating, finding coupons, uh, looking for discounts, putting on a whole production, sis down here got you at the bottom. When I tell you their wedding was a full-on production, like she bought the whole James Bond like theme hashtag to life. It was incredible. So if you have not, you need to go to her Facebook page you need to check out the video. Sis, give them the dates because the video was bomb. I, okay, it's Cinematic Bams Films. It's on YouTube. It's on our page. I appreciate that shit. Listen, it was, it was it was such bomb. it was so fun. It was planning with RJ. I got the cool thing about it was, and I'm not gonna keep y'all long. Was 
when we when RJ, because I'm I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna be honest and true, RJ wanted destination. And he had his reasoning. Couldn't afford it. But he he wanted a destination. And I said, babe, if you if you you know how I am, I won't disappoint you yeah. if you trust me. Was it peaks and valleys, highs and lows? But I wouldn't take the planning out of it. But he him and I got to be within our within our means, mm -hmm. like financially, we got to be as creative as we wanted to be. And I was so grateful for that because sometimes I kind of just be like, well, I'll slide this information to this person. You don't have to mention that you got it from me. You don't have to mention that I helped you plan your wedding. None of that. Just for me to help plan an event was like, it was, it's always been fun for me. So RJ, when RJ and I became engaged, he was like, do you like, he don't, he gave me a, a lot of great ideas and I got, I was able to elevate him, but he was my biggest supporter. He was like, as long as it's not costing me everything <laughs> and you, us, as long yeah. as it ain't costing us, just do you. And he gave me creative control. And that was the best gift ever, whether we had five, 25 or 200 like it was the best gift ever so honestly I'm, RJ and I are working on some things but if anybody ever needs my help like I'd be more than happy yes. to help plan coordinate like this I love it it's yes. in my element when I do that stuff I'm like all right I'm like at the happiest besides yes. the music but yeah thank you Shay I, listen y'all look good everybody looked amazing <laughs> <laughs> thank you you had to pull the dress I'm out I'm just glad y'all had fun like that was yeah. the goal that we all had a good time it was time. fun it was yeah. a lot of fun so it was I, a lot I of appreciate fun. it absolutely so you got your doula you got your other podcaster and then you got your designer slash event planner I just trying to do a little planning too so between them two they gonna get you together sis gonna get you right with them doula services all right We'll little, we'll little, uh, a little hashtag on it, okay? Thank you so much for tuning in. We are going to let you all go. Thanks so much. We love you guys. Ladies, until next time, see ya.